We already know the Morgan three-wheeler is the greatest exotic, best worst car of all time. It's already defeated the very best the US and the UK could throw at it. But this week, a very special Comparo, because Germany for the first time is going to attempt to avenge the events of 1945. This week, Morgan versus Porsche 911 Carrera S Cabriolet. I want to tell you that the Porsche 911 is absolute junk, but obviously it isn't because it's a Porsche 911. They're all great. I mean, put it up against anything from Italy and it's, it's going to win because Italian cars are junk and, and they truly are junk. But there's a lesson here because if you have a fair competition between the Germans and the English, the outcome is not so easy. When the Germans built the Bismarck in World War II, arguably the finest battleship of its time, and they sent it out, it was finally defeated by a f squadron of British biplanes made of wood and cloth called swordfish equipped with torpedoes. And that's exactly what the Morgan is, minus the wings and torpedoes. And that's why this Caparo is a real one. Let's talk about specs. This car costs approximately $100,000. The Hamptons are approximately 100 miles away. This car can seat, in theory, four, but really two plus two. The owner of the car is currently in the Hamptons with one girlfriend having driven another car, which costs $250,000, to get out there while leaving this car behind for one hour with one friend to make one video about how much he thinks this car sucks compared to the Morgan, because this is junk and the Morgan wins. Let's start with wheels and tires. We all know the Morgan is these beautiful wire-framed wheels with these brakes that say Morgan on them and that they work. Uh, the Porsche has some um, better brakes and um, bigger wheels and tires, but guess what? Nobody cares because if you get a flat tire in a 911, you don't have a full-size spare. In a Morgan, you have one. And since both cars' natural habitat are the city streets of Manhattan, you will get a flat. Therefore, the Porsche is junk, Morgan wins. Let's talk about headlights. These headlights are absolutely gorgeous. They are stunning. They are amazing. I love them. But the 996 headlights were terrible and I can't get them out of my mind. And, and I can't stop thinking of like you meeting a girl and falling in love with her and then getting engaged and then meeting her mother and seeing what the mother looks like and what, what the kids look like. And therefore the Porsche is junk and the Morgan wins. Let's talk about safety systems. The Porsche is ringed with these ultrasonic sensors uh, which set off alarms in the car when you approach too close to other vehicles, which I suppose is safer if you're a coward and a baby, because in a Morgan, when you get too close to other things, bad things happen, like your wheels and tires fall off, your passenger begins to scream, and then you die. Therefore, the Porsche is junk, the Morgan is safer, and the Morgan wins. It's the front of the Porsche has this beautiful mounting location for a license plate, which means that if you're stupid enough to put something clever in your license plate, everyone can see it. The front of the Morgan doesn't even have anywhere to put a license plate, therefore you're protected from looking like a jerk. The Porsche is junk, the Morgan wins. The windshield is um, very impressive, it's large and it's probably very well engineered and probably pretty good in a rollover, but it seems to have some kind of uh, coating or filament which messes with radar detectors, I'm not entirely sure. Do you know what car does not have a windshield? the Morgan three-wheeler. Therefore, this is junk and the Morgan wins. The mirrors, if you look close enough and you don't know what car they're on, they could literally be on any car. It's got metal, it's got plastic. It could be from Pep Boys and mounted on anything. It's clearly junk and the Morgan wins. Let's talk about visibility. The visibility in this car is amazing. I can see 360 degrees. I can see that I don't have a spare tire on the back and that everyone thinks I'm an asshole. Therefore, the Porsche is junk and the Morgan wins. The rear of the Porsche is absolutely gorgeous. The Carrera S has this flared rear haunches and it looks amazing, but then you notice it's got this rock protection which looks really bad because the rocks and the haunches and it looks like it's out, uh, it, it, it looks, I hate it. And the Morgan only has one tire in the back and it's not flared and never has problem with rocks because the whole car is scratched all the time anyway and, and the Porsche is junk and the Morgan wins. The rear of the Porsche 911 is gorgeous and of course you've got these great exhaust uh, tips but there's a problem. The problem is that the exhaust note is adjustable. You have a choice. Choices for cowards. In the Morgan, there is no choice. And why would anyone want to have a sports car with a quiet setting? Therefore, the Porsche is junk and the Morgan wins. 
let's talk about the keys. The Porsche key, uh, this is, does this look like a key for a car that costs over $100,000? Not to me, and look how worn down it is. You know something, this key um, is an insult. For this much money, it should be made of, of aluminum and it should come with a little thing of, of lube. This key is an insult. I'm, the Morgan doesn't even have a key. It doesn't need one. You can start it with a screwdriver. This is junk. The Morgan wins. Let's talk about storage. Uh, you press the button to open the frunk, and then you have the, you, then you look at the smudges from the last time you opened it because there's no way to open it without smudging it. And then you've got the trunk, which has got uh, this white cover, which is already dirty because it's white, and, and then they get dirty, which is stupid. And then you've got the... Uh, cleaning supplies and cleaning supplies and um, and uh, what look, a bad team hat and what looks like a rape kit. Um, this this trunk sucks and everything in it is stupid uh, and then you have what looks like a, a emergency roadside repair kit for for ants. Um, it's the Zoolander model maybe. This whole thing is just are, are you serious? And then you've got this handle. What does this do? Oh, that's the interior emergency release thing in case you happen to lock a small child that's not yours in there, which is probably why that other kit was in there. This thing is stupid. The contents indicate the kind of person who buys a 911. The Porsche is junk. The Morgan wins. Let's talk about ingress and egress. With the top down, it's obviously really easy because you can get in and, uh, and you're in. But in the Morgan, there is no top, so you can never bump into it. Therefore, this is junk and the Morgan wins. This interior is pretty nice by modern standards and it appears to have all the necessary gauges and controls. But let's be really clear. There are only two Porsche interiors. Everything before 2000, which is awesome, and everything after 2000, which is junk. And what year is this? A 2013? Junk. Morgan wins. This is a 2 plus 2, which means it has a back seat which doesn't work, which should be obvious. Let's be really clear. If you have a back seat, it should be big, big enough to have passengers that are at least five foot ten. Which, if you can buy this car, you can afford to pay for passengers that are at least that tall. Here you have some buttons. This raises and lowers the spoiler, which is stupid. This raises and lowers the exhaust note, which is stupid. This turns on and off the eco engine kill option, which is stupid. Uh, this is traction control off, which is stupid. This is adjustable shocks, which is stupid. Sport Plus, which no driver of this car needs because they're in a cabriolet. And this is Sport Light, which is basically half a Viagra. Everything here is stupid. The good version of this car, the GT3 RS, has none of these buttons. Or maybe it does, I don't know. And if it does, that's stupid because a sports car needs two things. A steering wheel, a gas pedal, four things and a manual transmission, and a skilled driver behind it. This car is junk, the Morgan wins. <laughs> so obviously the 911 is better on paper, and probably better in every single way. And people like JF want us to keep believing that. It but is there, the fact, it is the truth. But there is something in the human condition which craves flaws. Character is based on original sin. People who are a little funny and weird are okay. more fun to hang the, out the with. The only reason that that car is better than this car is that girls notice that. No one really cares about Porsches anymore. And that is <clears> the <throat> entire episode summed up into, we could stop the episode right now, but we won't because there's so many other things Fact to say remains, about. Fact remains, 911 is still a better vehicle than that. Well, what is better? In terms of performance, in terms of reliability. Reliability is not this, a factor. This will always get your girlfriend home at night that potentially will get you divorced. So, <laughs> the problem with men and manhood today is everyone thinks that a frictionless relationship is a good one. But from friction, love is built. Okay. Well, a modern 911 drives exactly as I would expect it to. The handling is amazing and the braking is amazing and the grip is amazing. I mean, everything on paper is amazing, exactly as you would expect it to be. I'm not going to make the argument that these things are problems and therefore it's junk. But you can't avoid the fact that every single improvement on the car takes, it doesn't take away from the driving experience. It reduces the amount of learning a driver's got to do to become a great driver. 
the better a car becomes at helping you go fast, the worse it is in terms of making you a better driver. And here we are in traffic, and this is why, once again, this car is absolute junk. No one is looking at me. Why am I in this car? I, I, if I open the top, the fumes, the smell, the stench, this car makes no sense. It's absolute junk, and for the money, offers no value, because for the price of this, at about $100,000, or more, I could buy a Morgan three-wheeler and all the parts necessary to keep it running for approximately 18 months. Therefore, this is junk and the Morgan wins. Cobblestones, now the pain begins. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> I think the Morgan actually might be softer than this car. It's amazing when you come across a car that you know is good, but then has so many terrible aspects to it that we can't even be funny about it. There are literally homeless people with cell phones with a better infotainment system than this car. There are, on St. Mark's Place. Any day of the week, I can go down there, and there's a guy sleeping on the street with a better infotainment system than it's on this car. I mean, literally, Porsche could go hire a bunch of homeless guys from Astro Place where I live, and bring, fly them to Germany, pay them less than the engineers who designed this, and have a better infotainment system. So this is junk, and Morgan wins because it doesn't even have an infotainment system, and a sports car doesn't need one anyway. Stupid. Stupid. I don't know really how to sum up this car, except by saying I'd rather be driving an electric moke. And that was a terrible car. So far on the Morgan versus leaderboard, we've had an electric Moke, a Vanderhall Laguna, a Land Rover Series 1, and a Porsche 911 Carrera S. And I'd have to say that right now, of all those vehicles, this would rank at the bottom. So I'm sorry, Porsche, although you have delivered an engineering masterpiece. It is, in effect, junk. George, which car is better, the Porsche or the Morgan? The Morgan. The Morgan? Mm -hmm. Why is the Morgan better? The Morgan is better. The white color is red. Do you want to say that again? <laughs> Morgan is better because? 